Hello guys. It's Tuesday, September 15th. If you were in class, uh, what we did today, we passed out some books. Uh, we discussed uh, how to answer uh, the POD. We talked about uh, some other group answers. Um, and just kind of talking about how things are different this year at the junior high for in-person and even out of person. Uh, so your answers might vary on that. Um, keeping in mind that uh, even if you are in person, you still have to do PODs at home. Uh, our focus today is going to be on the next chapter. Uh, I promised the in-class group, and I think I got to most of them, uh, it was uh, going to be your first question on your next test. It was, hey, what is the period of fighting between the North and the South that lasted from 1861 to 1865? Uh, and we hope that you get the right answer to almost every first question on every test I give you. Uh, and it's sometimes even the title of the chapter. So uh, that is kind of uh, indicative of whether you're doing your, your work and studying, uh, whether you can get the at least first question right, uh, because it's the, just the title of the chapter. So as we're going through here, we're going to uh, kind of look at uh, the timeline, which I, I think we've talked about. This is what we do about every first day of the chapter to kind of give you an idea uh, about what's going on uh, at the time. So why it matters. The Civil War, a war in which Americans fought other Americans, transformed the United States. It shattered the economy of the South while contributing to the rapid economic growth of the North and the West. African Americans gained freedom when slavery was abolished, but the war left a legacy of bitterness between the North and the South that lasted for generations. Some would say you can still feel the effects today. The impacts today, the institution of slavery was abolished, and the war established the power of the federal government over the states. So as slavery at the time was considered to be a state's right, uh, the federal government is now going to step in and uh, kind of trump that, no pun intended. So the first thing uh, that we talked about on the timeline today and almost where we uh, had to end early in class was kind of comparing the first American flag here, if I can draw. Okay, so uh, this flag right here, American flag. So we talked about this a little bit today, and uh, eventually our uh, classmates realized, hey, there are less, in fact, one person even counted, but there are less stars on there. Eventually we got to the realization that, yes, there were just not 50 states in the United States when that flag was made. Uh, the next one uh, that we look at uh, is the Confederate flag. So one of our... Uh, topics of contention that we got to in some of the classes today before our 26-minute bell rang was, hey, is it okay for a state to fly a Confederate flag? Now, individuals, I guess, have their freedom of speech and can do so, but what does it represent? Now, um, as I think I even said in class today uh, that I, uh, I'm a state employee, therefore do not have opinions on the subject. However, uh, I will play devil's advocate on many uh, things that we talk about and discuss in class, one of them being uh, this very contentious flag. Uh, over the last several uh, years and months and current events uh, and stuff that's going on around the news, we might see some people say, hey, this is a symbol of slavery and oppression and the treatment of African Americans. Uh, well, some groups of people might say, that, say this is simply a symbol of what our history was and that we should celebrate our history. So uh, that might be a better thing for an in-class debate, but uh, we've seen the Confederate flag and even statues of Confederate soldiers be the center of some contention and apprehension in the United States. So in 1861, the Confederate States of America are formed. And the conflict at Fort Sumter, South Carolina, begins the Civil War. So the first fighting of the Civil War, and as we said in class, and this, the last part we got to, is contingent upon the fact that actually nobody died at this first fighting. Um, I believe a horse died, uh, and a guy's got his arm blown off. However, not one person's life was lost. However, this was a long road to what would be America's bloodiest war. Uh, in 1862, Robert E. Lee was named commander of the Confederate armies. And uh, in some classes today, I talked about, hey, if you were picking teams, like if we're picking a basketball team, not 
whether we want to fight for slavery or fight against slavery. But if I'm picking the best team and best soldiers, would I want more soldiers from the South or would I want more soldiers from the North? We hope that you get to the realization that, man, not a lot of deer hunting goes on in downtown New York City. So if I'm going to pick soldiers for my team, I might want some guys that at least shot a gun before. Uh, so generally, soldiers from the South were a little bit more, uh, I guess, army ready or battle ready. Doesn't matter. It mean that there weren't better shots in the North. But when we look at it, uh, the landscape, um, that may be the team of uh, contention in the South. They're better shots. Uh, as we look at the impact of the Civil War, though, on the South's economy, the fact that it was being fought in the South, their land was being torn up, uh, it really gave the North a very big chance of winning. So even though we may concede that the North would be the better choice, uh, soldiers-wise, the Southern guys, they, they were familiar with guns. In 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued by Abraham Lincoln, freeing the slaves that were in the North, although there is a problem with this. There were not very many slaves in the North. He did not, uh, now that we had two countries, it would almost be like President Trump commanding Canada to do something. That, that wouldn't work out very well. So with Confederate States of America, they didn't abide by the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed the slaves. In the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863, um, after the battle was over, one of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War and a turning point in the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln vowed uh, that slavery would not happen again, very famously issuing his Gettysburg Address four score and seven years ago. Our forefathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and built on the presupposition that all men are created equal. So as he started this kind of uh, long speech here uh, and looking over the battlefield of uh, death, uh, he vowed that a government by the people and for the people shall not perish from this earth. So uh, as we're turning the page there, sometimes uh, if it's uh, timeline related, we'll look at uh, what the pictures are of here. Uh, and we see Confederate soldiers and we see Union soldiers fighting in the Civil War. Um, several people, as we noticed, uh, unfortunately lay upon the ground. Um, next, 1864, General Sherman's march to the sea begins. A path of destruction, um, miles and miles wide, uh, where General William Tecumseh Sherman uh, was going to burn bridges and houses and homes and cities and crops, everything in his path on his march to the sea. Uh, also in 1864, Lincoln is re-elected president, so serving a second term in the White House, one that would kind of be short-lived. Uh, the Civil War ends in 1865, and Lincoln is also assassinated. Now, there's a lot of little information on this timeline here that uh, we, we've kind of watered down, uh, but today we're just kind of looking at uh, the big picture. Uh, giving you an idea about the time period in history that we're talking about. Um, so my only assignment for my in-class people today as well as my remote learners is uh, just to watch the video, uh, finish up the timeline, whether you did it with your book or you listened to me or just read what I have shown you here. Uh, and that's it. Tomorrow in class we're going to look at uh, section one of chapter 16, uh, the two sides of the Civil War. Have a great rest of the day.